Is your, is your gearbox leaking, making noise, vibrating? These could be definitely signs of, of misalignment. Hey, this is Scott from, from Sumitomo. We're going to go over the principles. We're going to go over the typical failure modes or typical things that we see in the field and the, and the gearboxes that are returned to us, as well as uh, corrective actions that uh, can easily be implemented in the field by you guys. So the first thing that you're going to see in a, in a failure mode is, is, is probably a leaking seal. This is a seal. Uh, that's the first thing that we see, and that's, that's one of the things that we tell customers to check immediately uh, when you have a leaking seal is, hey, is your alignment okay? The second, and this will, this will increase the seal life, uh, right behind most seals is this guy, and this is a Baron. Uh, so Barons have a, a, an amount of play in them that's given for thermal expansion. And if you have a shaft that's misaligned, this bearing can be preloaded and you'll take out any of the expansion properties and rotating properties out of the bearing, which will decrease the life of this bearing, which will ultimately break other stuff. So the first thing you'll see is potentially is a leaking seal or a bearing failure or decreased bearing life. The third thing is, is vibration. vibration uh, when you see vibration, uh, or you can, and a lot of times you can just feel it. You can walk up to a gearbox, you have a lot of these gearboxes running. Something's different from this gearbox to the other gearbox. It's the same application. More than likely, it has something to do with the application or the install. First thing that we like, that we tell people to check is, is obviously, is your alignment okay? Um, you know, and back in our lubrication video, we talked about making sure you got oil in there, that your oil level is okay, obviously. But um, that's, uh, th those are really the three things that we see the most of. Leaking seals, failed bearings, and vibration, which typically leads to gear tooth fractures or gear tooth wear that's, uh, that's, that's premature in, in the design life of our gearboxes. 50% of equipment failures are really due to some form of misalignment in the equipment. So we're gonna talk about the two, we're gonna give you guys a visual of what I'm talking about with the two types of misalignment that we see the most of. We mentioned parallel misalignment. So you have two shafts, if they're aligned properly, which, we, which is that they, they need to spin what we call collinear. So they're spinning together on the same axis. So angular misalignment, you have this or this, which is an angle away from the face of the shaft. So that is, a, that is preloading the bearing and also deflecting the seal. Um, you, you know, first thing that you're gonna seal if you, uh, see if you have excessive angular is typically a seal leak. Um, and obviously if you have a lot of angular misalignment, you're gonna have a quick bearing failure. But these two guys are the first things that you're gonna see have issues with um, if you have high speed misalignment. One of the first things that we learn from when you have a, a angular misalignment or parallel misalignment in seal wear is we'll see a wear pattern on the collar itself. These collars are plunge ground and if the seal is being, uh, there's more pressure on the seal than what we typically, than what we have designed for, you'll see a groove on that's, uh, you know, that's more predominant on one part of the radius than you will another. So in other words, the shaft the shafts are kicked this way, um, and the seal lip wears much faster, so you see that leak much, much quicker than we would recommend, uh, what, 12 to 18 months on a typical seal life in a, in a pretty, pretty typical application. So the second uh, misalignment that we see a lot of is parallel misalignment, which is basically, I'm going to show you this in a vertical. The shaft should be like this vertically, and they're actually offset parallel. So they're still in line but they're offset. So that's parallel misalignment. So when you do an alignment, you have to have your angle, angle set right, right, when you're indicating this in, as well as your parallelism. So these have to be what, we, what I said earlier, collinear. So they have to run on the same plane. And you're not, you're not aligning couplings in this. You're aligning the shafts that the couplings ride on. All right, so we want to talk about a little bit about 
uh, the alignment, you know, what, what alignment is and the equipment that we use to align uh, uh, gearboxes, pumps, motors uh, to each other. The three main types, you, you have your straight edge, which is more what we consider visual. Uh, you have dial indicators, which is more mechanical. And then you have your laser alignment equipment, which is much more accurate and um, what we would you know, like to see all of our gearboxes and, and motors aligned with is, is obviously the laser alignment. Um, the th things to check, uh, you definitely want to check the alignment three to six months after your initial install. Like I said a little bit earlier, things move, you have thermal expansion, equipment acts differently under load than it is unloaded. So you want to go back and check this and make sure any, you know, things haven't moved, retorque your foundation bolts. Just check things to make sure that everything's looking okay. Obviously use your, you know, your typical predictive maintenance techniques, uh, you know, the vibration, uh, you know, checking the alignment, checking your oil levels, oil sampling, all those things play hand in hand to, uh, to long-term operation. There will be an installation like a tolerance chart on allowable uh, misalignment for your for your coupling. Yeah, make sure you guys check the alignment before you just you know wire that thing up, bolt it down, and run it. Because you now we've done a a shop alignment for you guys to make sure everything's alignable um, at your job site. Because bouncing in the back of a truck a thousand miles from one of our factory locations. It, you, things move. But anyway, we want to talk about the benefits of specifically to shaft alignment. Uh, you got your obviously your approved uh, operating life and reliability of your equipment inside your plant. Uh, you've reduced the overall cost of, hey, I've got a $8 seal leaking on this $500 gearbox, but it's going to cost me $2,500 to pull it out because I didn't align it properly. So at the end of the day, less downtime means more uptime. That means more money. Hey, check out our other videos and make sure you follow us on social media. Good job. That's a lot of good information. That sounded good, didn't it? Hey, yeah. <laughs> cool.